Typically, I would expect us to hold under this green line here at about 7.6, right? Um, just purely looking at data on the chart here on the next monthly uh, data report. It could go higher, of course, um, but I would just expect this trend to continue um, for the most part. And if it does break this area of support that we got here currently at the 7.1, right, that would basically start its descent uh, significantly lower in terms of the chart. Now, the other thing that I'll say is, remember, we've been talking about this. If you go over to the CPI main website, I believe it's the home. Wow, they don't have that up there anymore. So the, the thing that you got to pay attention to is basically in January, when they give out this data, it's going to be the data for December of 2022. So it is still possible that the data in January is taking into account the last two years of inflation, essentially. Um, whereas here on February 14th, on Valentine's Day, when we get the January 2023 numbers, that will be based on the last one year of history um, for inflation. So what that means is it will look like by the time we get to Valentine's Day, that inflation um, will be significantly lower somewhere, you know, um, you know, it, it can go significantly lower from here simply on how they're calculating the data. So could it be down below six? Definitely, right? Could it go be below five? Sure. Could it go as low down here as four by February? I would say that would be pretty extreme by March, maybe. Um, but yeah, I would expect, or I do expect, you know, um, once they do change that data, that March and February um, will be quite different. And so then how does that affect, um, essentially what we got going here with the Fed, right? That may, and this is pure speculation, right? Take take it with a grain of salt. Um, where's 2023? Have they not put the, oh, there we go. Eh. Did they not put the 2020? Oh, I think the 2023 is at the end, right? There we go. Um, so how that could affect, right? These, these Fed meetings, essentially, we have one here at the end of January uh, over to the first, and then the next one is in, in the uh, end of March, right? So going into February, Essentially, uh, this could start giving the, pedal, the Fed a little bit more uh, confidence to pivot slightly, right? So that just uh, these dates, uh, I would say, would be the three to pay attention to. Now, the thing that's interesting about this is we have the 31st of, and then, so we, uh, of January, 21st, 22nd of March, and, and May 2nd or 3rd. If we do go back to those 60-day cycles for Bitcoin, Gonna take a moment here. Let's go back to the daily. If we do go back and look at those three 60 day cycles, you know, given what we know right now, obviously they can uh, adjust slightly by days, but we have January 20th here, which would be a full 60 day cycles. Then here, look at that, lands on March 21st. And then this one landing on May 20th. Right. So kind of interesting that we could have uh, the next 60 day cycle be greatly affected by that March um, Fed meeting. And by that point, definitely the CPI um, inflation index as well. So just remember um, that bit of information, um, you know, over the next few months, I do think it is quite important.